What's up, everybody? Sunday session, episode 39, here to deliver a ton of information about growing your e-commerce business. My name is Eric Catalano. I'm a son, I'm a boyfriend, I'm a cousin, I'm a business owner, and I'm just a regular guy with big dreams and aspirations that I continue to take action on every day. So excited to have all of you here. Uh, the purpose of these is I go live every Sunday as often as possible, and I answer your questions. Right, I put the pieces of the puzzle together. So anything you got for me, I'm here to help. It's a pleasure, an honor, and a privilege to be able to be hanging out with all of y'all on this beautiful Sunday afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are in the world. Got any questions from the YouTube side? I don't know what's going on here. Is it necessary to have a warehouse while doing wholesale? Absolutely not. Pop it to Instagram, check the video. Um, I think it's called, it literally has a title like why you don't need a warehouse to sell on Amazon. I posted it like two days ago. Why you don't need a warehouse to sell on Amazon. While having a warehouse will help with your growth in the beginning, not everybody is financially situated to afford a warehouse. That's okay. Here's four ways you can leverage to get your inventory to Amazon. Number one, Use a prep center. Number two, use Amazon prep services. Number three, ship the inventory to your house. And number four, open up a UPS box or partner with local companies in your area. A friend talked to me about you and I am on the way to start my online, online business, but I still, but I feel lost. It makes sense you feel lost especially if you don't have any guidance. This is something I realized, right? I've been, I've been, uh, I'm, I'm looking to buy a few properties this year, right? So initially last year at the end of the year, I started watching a lot of YouTube videos. And before I knew it, I had like 10 YouTube videos bookmarked. I had all these TikTok videos saved and it was all scattered all over the place, right? I realized I was doing myself a huge disservice because instead of learning from one person directly, I tried to learn from this you know, real estate entrepreneur and this real estate entrepreneur. And I tried to put all the pieces of the puzzle together, right? And it wasn't serving me in, in multiple months. I got nowhere, right? And then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to pick my favorite out of all these real estate guys and I'm going to buy their, their program. And that's exactly what I did. And now it all makes sense to me because I'm not putting the pieces of the puzzle together. It was a step-by-step -step guidance with the opportunity to ask questions to this real estate professional and grow my real estate portfolio. So like if you're at a point where you feel lost and you're confused, the best thing to do is pay somebody to show you the way. Pay somebody for guidance. The same way if you were trying to learn a skill or a trade, right, you would go to a trade school. If you're trying to become a carpenter, you don't just go start swinging a hammer around outside. Absolutely, you'll learn some things. But in order to become a carpenter or an electrician or a plumber, you go to a trade school, right? If you want to become a lawyer or a doctor, you go to college, right? If you want to become an Amazon seller, you invest in someone who's doing it already and you have them teach you and show you the way. Because figuring out yourself is going to be much more complicated. You're going to make a lot of mistakes in the beginning. I made them a lot of mistakes in the beginning. I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars over the, over the past 10 years selling on Amazon, right? Through mistakes. I've made it back tenfold through the, the profitable items that I'm purchasing, but you need a guider, you need a teacher, you need someone to show you the way. Fonsagram, Eric, from 120K to half a million a month in sales, best, best practices. Yeah, it's all about your systems, man. It's all about your systems. Everybody's looking for the magic nugget, the magic distributor that's gonna take them there. Listen, you could have 50 phenomenal distributors, but if you don't have the systems in place in your company, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You got to be super efficient with your buying process to hit a million dollars a month. You got to be super efficient with your packaging and your warehouse, because if not, you will just be turning inventory and not pulling the profits that you want to make. Right. So really, the difference between a, a six figure a month seller and a seven figure a month seller is all in your systems and your processes. And obviously, you need the accounts to get you there. So reaching out to more wholesalers. And Fonza Graham, I, I think I recognize your name. I believe you're an East Coast, right? But if you're not, that's step number one as well. Um, and then the goal would be, you know, bump it up to inner circle. How to get more, more reviews as a new seller. So I'll give you this step by step. So go to your orders tab, right? First, click the little hamburger. This is how to get more seller feedback on your orders. And I believe you can go back 60 days on these. Um, so you want to go to your hamburger in the top left of Seller Central. Everybody do this right now. Right, right now or take notes or screen record this shit um, because this is going to be huge, especially if you're a new seller. Seller feedback is massive, my friends, massive. 
So you want to pop into your orders tab. You want to find an order that's completed and it's green. You want to click on the order ID and in the top right next to refund order, it says request a review. You want to do that for all of your listings. Right. I believe you can go back 60 days, might even be more, might be a little less than I have to check it uh, to confirm. But regardless, you want to go through all of your completed items and request a review. Now, that is not a product review. That is a seller review. It's seller feedback. Right. And keep in mind, you'll get about a one percent seller feedback conversion. So out of 100 orders, you probably only get one feedback. That's OK. Don't beat yourself up. It's a, it's a time thing. It's a time thing. I got over 150,000 seller feedbacks. Took me a very long time to get them. Um, initially, we were requesting feedback. So not only can you request them a review through your managed orders, if you're smaller, it's much easier to do that. So you don't have to pay an additional service fee for like uh, one of these um, automated refund seller feedback request softwares. Um, but if you're much larger and you have, you know, hundreds of orders coming in a day, then you'd want to use a, a seller feedback software like Feedback Wiz, Feedback 5. Um, and there's a few other out there as well. I love this shit, y'all. I could talk about this shit all day. This is seriously like, this is what gets me up in the morning. Like talking about Amazon business growth, talking about business growth in general, talking to other educated entrepreneurs and uh, thriving business owners about what you're doing in your businesses. Like this is, that's one of the main reasons I created Inner Circle because I need an elite group to surround myself with. No problem, Lily. Make sure you go check that out. Take care of it right now. You know, hopefully you'll get a couple seller feedbacks in the next couple of days. Uh, have we had any issues booking hazmat shipments? I've had storage limits to support the shipment. Have 83 SKUs, but when I try to move forward, it says please remove 81 of the SKUs. No, we have no, we've had no issues. You want to just check your cubic feet limits as well as your quantity limits. It's very odd though that they're telling you to remove literally 98% of the shipment. Yeah, we buy from a few distributors that sell on Amazon themselves with the understanding that the relationships there and the and the communication is open. Because I have no problem buying a product that the distributor is selling on. But if they if they tell me they got 50,000 units in stock and they're going to continue to pump them in Amazon, then I'm going to be much more mindful of the, the items that I purchase. And I also find that from an Amazon perspective, my team of very sophisticated and well-trained buyers has the ability to pull ACEs out of catalogs that most people cannot, right? They're able to find opportunities on Amazon versus the catalog that most people cannot. So even if the distributor is selling on Amazon, I guarantee you there's products that they have in their catalog that they're not selling on Amazon because they didn't find those listings, whether it's the bundles, the variety packs, the multi-packs. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Don't sleep on that. Cars and cleaning hair, what would be your most recommended way to increase capital purchase inventory? Essentially, uh, the way we recommend initially is, is credit cards. Credit cards will be your easy access to capital. There's no reason whether you need to pull your business credit or your personal credit to get that first credit card. You can't get a line you know, between five and $15,000 over the initially, and then you'll be able to leverage more business cards. Um, the cards we recommend, Amex Plum is great, gives you a 60-day grace period um, to sell products on Amazon, which technically allows you to buy the inventory, sell it, and then pay the pay the card back with the money you made for the inventory. So it's like free money. Another one, good. Capital Spark is good. Chase Inc. is good. These all give you one and a half to 2% points back on your purchases. Um, next way to grow capital would be um, you can have private investors, SBA loans, private bank loans. Um, you could use funding opportunities like sellersfunding.com, 8FIG. These are all companies that offer funding. But the first thing you want to do is leverage um, credit cards for capital. Suggest any videos for product hunting. So yeah, I got a few of them on our YouTube channel. So you can go explore there. Okay. So Eric, I bought your course, which is amazing by the way. And you mentioned something about Monday live calls that I might've missed or I'm not aware of. So how do I end up on the Monday call where I go to Facebook? Please explain. So D search the term in your email. Welcome to eSellers or I. In the fulfillment email we sent you the, a couple minutes after you joined, it had the step-by-step -step instructions on A, how to log into the program, B, how to where to join the Facebook group, and C, it was a short video to watch showing you how to do live weekly coaching calls. And also, if you go to the course calendar in eSellers or I in school, um, you will be able to click register as well. Let me just see, Dennis Moulton. And unfortunately, so this is what I'm going to have you do, Dennis. I'm not aware of how, so I ended up. Uh, if you never joined any of the calls, your calls, so you get four four months of coaching when you join, and you joined on 8-22-2022. So your calls technically expired on December 22nd. 
2022. Um, so you don't have any calls left. You can renew the calls, but here's what I'll do. If you've never attended any, send me a DM. We'll get you set up. We'll get you back in the calls. So you can leverage those. And then after your, your uh, four months of coaching, it switches to a subscription if you want to continue. It's like $250 a month, which is well worth it. Spend an hour, spend two hours with me and our team every Monday night for $250 a month. Can't go wrong with that shit. Thoughts on fragrance category. I stay far, far, far away from fragrances, colognes, and perfumes. Far away. It's a very huge counterfeited industry. Um, if you ever go to any flea markets, they don't even let you sell fragrances, handbags, perfumes, colognes at, at flea markets because that's how highly counterfeited the community is the industry so and if you're talking if they can't even do it at a flea market which is like the, the lowest on the totem pole of product opportunities you know that's where people are selling stuff for 20 cents on the dollar 15 cents on the dollar if there's an issue at flea markets you know there's an issue on amazon so we've gotten burned in the past we've met a few vendors uh actually one of them we met at asd is a solely a perfume distributor they ended up shipping us samples instead of the real products um there was customer complaints you know, everything looked legit as far as the products go, but because uh, perfumes, colognes and, and fragrances is such a highly counterfeited industry that there's there's potential nightmares on Amazon. So unless you're buying it directly from the brand who manufactures it and you can get letters authorizing the authenticity, I would say far away. Do we use any software like Jungle Scout, Helium 10 or Keepa? So for wholesale, we do use Keepa, we do use AC Insight. For wholesale, Helium 10 and Jungle Scout is not a requirement. The only thing we use Helium 10 for um, is for when we're looking to create some brand direct exclusive relationships. We use Helium 10 to kind of sort the data out, get average monthly revenue per SKU, average monthly revenue per brand that we're analyzing, you know, total review counts, uh, missed opportunities, analyze their pricing through Keepa, see when they're going out of stock, seeing how the price fluctuates and how we can be more consistent with their pricing to offer the end consumer a better customer experience. Um, so we do not for, for wholesale other than brand direct exclusive relationships. What percentage of distributors you reach out to are eventually profitable? Um, so you'll get about a 10% close rate on distributors. So, or 10% open rate. So you reach out to 100 distributors, you'll probably open accounts with 10 of them on the low side. Close rate is closer to 5%. So if you reach out to 100 distributors, you'll probably only open accounts with five of them. Right, and out of those five, a few of them will be profitable. Um, it's it's really a matter of how you're willing to leverage the relationship because what most people see is when they open a wholesale catalog and they see it's not profitable from the rip, they just like, oh man, this is this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Wholesale is ridiculous. It's like, no, like put in the work, do the research, connect with them, see if there's any discounts they're offer, see if there's any weekly promotional sheets, line drives, monthly promotional deals. Like, don't just quit because you see a, a catalog that's that's priced too high. You got to put in the work. Martin said, I met you in Vegas at Fogo de Chao. Every day I do your advisor in my store, still growing every month. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Happy to happy to hear that. Um, we're, we'll be actually doing an event again with Marcelo this year uh, for two hours out in Vegas. So maybe I'll see you at that event or maybe I'll see you at our event, BGHL, which I believe, let me just confirm, we have... 29 tickets left for BGHL. So place holds about 200 and we got 29 left. So if you didn't sign up for BGHL and you're going to be in Las Vegas for ASD, you definitely want to lock in your ticket now. Also for probably the next two or three days, there's discounts on multiple ticket purchases. So if you want to bring your wife, bring your spouse, bring your partner, bring your friend, bring your kids, uh, just keep in mind it's 18 and over to get in. Alcohol will be served and there'll be wristbands given out. Um, but yeah, we got about 29 tickets left. And 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 BGHL is, is really cool, right? It's a six-figure event. Like to, for us to host BGHL costs us over a hundred thousand dollars, right? So like we curate the event to teach all of you about growing your business on Amazon. We have some phenomenal speakers. First of all, I have the same MC that Russell Brunson, Tony Robbins have used. His name's Devon. And he's an OG in the game. He was our MC last year. We got some incredible speakers. CJ, he's an Amazon lawyer. Vanessa, she's an account health specialist. Um, Adrian from Seller Snap, he's a repricer specialist. He's going to talk about how to build your business and, and better repricing management skills. We also have Jason, Jason Lowe, who's a new speaker this year. And I'm super excited for his presentation. He's like an OG in the game. He's part of the inner circle with our Canada guys. 
and uh, is very knowledgeable. You know, he's been doing his own inner circles and masterminds for many years, and, and I got a lot of love and respect for the guy, so I'm super excited for him to speak at the event. And then obviously me and Sebastian will be delivering some heat as well. And then there'll be some opportunity to network and, and really meet some of these people that are in this live right now, like in person, right? And build those in-person relationships. Do we use a third-party company to help with reimbursements? Yes, we do. I believe we're using either Refund Manager or Sifted right now. We kind of bounce back and forth. Katita is good as well. And then also Dima owns one. Sellerize is good. So there's a bunch of really great reimbursement softwares uh, that you can you can implement into your company to essentially get money back that Amazon has lost. Um, what's the biggest challenge for us scaling our business? So the biggest challenge for us right now is space. Uh, our lease is up in, in March. We were at about 20,000 square feet now. We're looking to upgrade to about 35,000. Um, and unfortunately, there's not much on the market. So our biggest challenge right now is space. You know, if we were able to get 35, 40,000 square feet, we'd be able to reopen our wholesale, uh, our wholesale business to start opening up some new wholesale accounts with some of our inner circle and e-seller dry members. But if we don't get that new space, then it's going to be challenging for us to do that. And we'll really be able to add a couple more packing stations and scale out our operation. You know, our goal for 2023 is about $75 million in sales. Uh, last year we did about 63 so 75 to, uh, million in sales more profitable more profit more profit that's where our focus is now All right i know how to build massive amazon businesses i know how to build really profitable amazon businesses so this year we're really honing in our profits to become more profitable because last year we our business grew in revenue about 22 percent but we only grew in net profits about 10 percent right so that's about 50 percent less than our revenue growth which is great, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about the additional 10% net profits, but we can do better and you can do better, right? Do I use or recommend Sellerboard? So I do not use Sellerboard, but I do recommend that I know a lot of my community members use it and they love it. Also, I have no affiliation with Sellerboard. Uh, so, oh, BGHL, there's a link in my bio. So just go right here on Instagram, it's the first option, it says sign up for BGHL. It's very intuitive, you click it, you fill it out. Um, five minutes later, you get a confirmation. And then a couple of days before the event, we'll e email you your QR ticket to get into the event. So you definitely want to be there. Uh, we had 29 tickets left, two were just purchased. So we have 27 tickets left. I mean, once they're gone, they're gone, right? I just had someone reach out to me. So through eSellers Dry, we offer a trade show walkthrough. Um, this year, we only had about 20 spots and they sold out a couple of days ago and there's just no more, right? There's no more. So it's like, when you're in our community, we're talking about this stuff every single week. So you gotta take action on it immediately. So Carson, go lock in. What are, what's everybody got going on tonight? I gotta go buy a suit. So I'm going to suit supply to get a fitted suit because I got a wedding to go to on the 10th of February. A high school friend of mine is getting married. So I'm excited about it. I need a new suit because I dropped 35 pounds in the past maybe three or four months. First, I started with 75 hard, which I did not complete. I got very close to it. I maybe day like 58 or 60. Um, I started slacking on drinking my water every day. And I was so close to the end that I even questioned just saying like, fuck it, I'm gonna say, you know what, it's like, who's that helping? That's not serving anybody. I didn't finish it. I got very close to finishing it. I dropped 35 pounds in the process. I built a lot of muscle, right? I'm building my six pack. It's here, it's solid. I was at the gym yesterday. I got some, I, I feel healthier than I've ever felt, but I did not complete the program, but it absolutely revolutionized and changed my life. It taught me a lot about commitment. Now I'm, I'm, a, I'm a multiple uh, day a week reader now, which is huge. Can't put a price tag on shit like that. You really can't, absolutely can't. Uh, I usually go live once a week uh, for the public. In my private community, I go live every week for about two hours. And then I leave the live open um, and he's so dry. And sometimes people are on there for five, six hours, just networking and, and talking. And then uh, Inner Circle, we have a, a live once a month, twice a month, actually. Uh, what percentage of your sales are FBA versus FBM? Uh, we don't do any FBM. Um, for those who don't know, Eric's course is top two. I don't know who number two is in the business. And he definitely has the best hold of your hand for the longest amount of time after you buy the course to help you out in the business. Top two is number one, bro. I don't know who number two is. Oh, we got to talk about that. It's number one. Thank you. You corrected it. Might be number one. It's number one. And also, just a heads up too, this is something super cool. So as, as some of you can see, some of the some of the videos need, need updating, right? And we're absolutely updating. And on my, it's important for me and Sebastian to provide you the most up-to-date content. So we're literally in the process now. We're looking at maybe a mid-March release for eSellers or i2.0. 
which is going to be completely updated content. Obviously, some of it's going to still live there because like the listing creation for wholesale bundles, like that shit is just facts right there. Like that module could literally add an additional $100,000 a month in re revenue for some larger sellers or $5,000 a month in revenue and profits for, for smaller sellers. So like that's just facts. The PPC guidance, that's just facts, right? But some of the product research we're in the process of updating, we're going to do new videos with Scan Unlimited, new videos with Source Correct, and we're going to upload those. And, and the beautiful thing is, if you're in eSellers or I before eSellers or I 2.0 releases, you will be locked in, grandfathered in to all of the benefits of eSellers or I 1.0 and 2.0, right? And we release 2.0, the price will be going up. It will be about $4,500 instead of $3,000. So if like you've been on the fence about joining, like now's the time. Now's the time. It'll save you 50% on the cost of the program. You'll get locked in for 2.0. You'll be able to access me and Sebastian and the community through live weekly coaching. Um, and you get access to the community, the private Facebook community as well. I've also had pallets delivered to UPS. Do your minimum margins change for a glass product? Absolutely. We have minimum, uh, higher minimum margins for glass products. So we won't buy glass products unless it's making us $5 or more. And that's just based on our average return rate for glass and damages. Absolutely, Diana. She said for all the Insta followers, if you're going to ASD, you should go and meet wholesalers, open accounts, then go to BGHL if you're serious about growing this year. Make a change this year. I agree. I agree. We love you, Diana. That's why your business did a million dollars in sales this year, right? Because you and Elijah and your husband, you guys are crushing it. Um, when sourcing suppliers, do you focus on a specific area or nationwide? I always encourage you to start locally only because it's easier to grow the relationship. You don't have to worry about cost of shipping. You can either pick it up or have them drop it off for relatively um, inexpensive or sometimes even free. So obviously that's the best bet to start locally. But a lot of times people don't live in big areas where they have local distributors. So then you'd want to start branching out. I mean, at the end of the day, essentially, you could search the whole United States. But here's a little insight. Like I don't purchase. I purchase from like one or two companies in California. But those California companies, because the, sh the cost to ship it over to us on the East Coast, you know, sometimes it's three, four thousand dollars for a full truckload of inventory to get it here. So we'll ship those products to prep centers instead. So it depends if you're on the West Coast, maybe opening accounts with East Coast distributors and shipping it to you is the move. Maybe you want to use prep centers for those. But if you're on the East Coast, same thing for the West Coast. Right. So you just got to be mindful of the ship to expenses when you're opening up accounts from other parts of the country. Does your program help those outside of the United States? Absolutely. We have dozens of sellers internationally. We got about 24, maybe 36 sellers in Canada, another dozen in the United Kingdom, a few from Mexico, a few from Colombia, a few from uh, Romania. We, for, for some reason, we have a lot of Romania and Turkish sellers in our community as well. So absolutely, what we teach is universal. It can be implemented in any Amazon marketplace. Obviously, like the business structure is a little different, but there's people in the community to help you with that. How important is it for a fairly new seller to go to ASD? It's important, you know, but... It depends on how much cash flow you have. Like if you got 7,000 bucks, I would recommend not going to ASD. Do we have an in-house CPA? Yeah, so we have a CPA that we use uh, locally. They pop in at the end of every month. They remedy our books, make sure everything's aligned properly. Um, but having an in-house CPA is definitely not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Um, there are CPAs all over the country. I just at our level and our size, we prefer to have that that face to face interaction with them. Right. So we could sit down once a month and be like, OK, this is where we're at. This is what we need to do. This is how much money we need in our company. Yeah, it's possible to run a wholesale business in the U.S. remotely from outside the U.S. Yeah, I got dozens of people in the community doing that as well. All right. Listen, my friends, this has been super cool. I'm going to hop off this now. And uh, I appreciate spending the past, you know what, maybe hour with y'all. It's a blessing. It's a privilege. It's an honor. I'm excited to see all of you thrive in your businesses. And I want to be a part of the growth that you experience. I want to provide you insights and resources and the knowledge for you to get to the level you are in order to achieve the level that you want to be at. Right. That's what it's all about for me. So I'm excited to meet a lot of you in. Uh, in Vegas, see you in person, you know, give you a big hug, congratulate you on your success. I'm excited to see a lot of you in Las Vegas at, at BGHL. So you got to lock them in now if you're going. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a beautiful day. Stay grateful and stay with. God bless you.